Wayne from the CERN and Earth and Space Center here. In today's video, we're going to be talking about constellations, specifically what makes a constellation in the sky, and it might not be as simple as you think. So let's jump in and take a look. So here we are, standing outside the CERN and Earth and Space Center. We have our date set for June 11th. The time is set for just about 10 o'clock in the evening, but that's not terribly important right now. What we're looking for is a group of very recognizable stars that we know as the Big Dipper. And if we look, you see it's towards the north and almost directly overhead at this time of night. Now we can see the few stars of the Big Dipper. I'm going to turn off our atmosphere and our ground to make it a little bit easier for us to see all of the stars that are out there. And now we can see the bright stars that make up that Big Dipper. And you might recognize that as a constellation, but you would be incorrect. Now this group of stars is actually what we call an asterism. An asterism is a group of stars that forms a very well-recognized shape in our skies, but it's not quite the same thing as an official constellation. The Big Dipper is actually part of an even larger group of stars, which we can see here if I outline it. There we go. And we know that shape as Ursa Major, or the Big Bear. Now, this that we see here, this stick figure of the entire shape, Ursa Major, is still just an asterism. It's not actually a constellation. It shares its name with an official constellation, but any of these sort of stick figures of connect the dots that we make with the stars, those are just asterisms. They are a collection of stars that form a very well-recognized shape. The actual official definition of a constellation is a little bit different, and it's defined by boundary lines, which I can outline here. I'll bring up the boundary line for Ursa Major. And everything that's inside of this big red boundary is part of Ursa Major, the constellation. Now that stick figure is a collection of the brightest stars inside of this area, and that's what makes it easier for us to find it in the sky. But everything that's in here, no matter how far we look, no matter how strong our telescope is, any distant galaxy, any asteroid that's passing through, is said to be part of Ursa Major at that point in time. So if I deselect Ursa Major here, and then we bring up all of our boundary lines, we can see that the sky, if I zoom out a little bit, is divided up into many constellations. There are 88 separate constellations that cover the entire night sky, the northern and southern hemispheres. I can bring up the constellation lines so that we can see those as well, and their names. And so we see that each one of these areas has a sort of stick figure associated with it. And each one of those stick figures is still just an asterism up there in our skies. And it is, like I said, just a giant map. So if astronomers make a new discovery, or they see a comet flying through the sky, or find a new supernova in a distant galaxy, they can say what constellation they found it in, and then astronomers all over the world know what area of the sky they need to look at in order to duplicate that discovery and study it a little bit more. And so all of this helps us just to track things and categorize things in our observable universe. And that is the basic difference between what makes an asterism and what makes a constellation. Well, thank you everyone for joining me today and learning the difference between a constellation and an asterism in our nighttime skies. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, my name is Wayne from the CERN and Earth and Space Center. Remember to like and subscribe for more cool space content. But most importantly, remember to get out there and take a look at your nighttime skies.